Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon, this is Dr. Pradhan here. Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will discuss logit and probit model. In the last lectures, we have discussed the dummy variable modeling. So, that to dummy independent variables. So, today we will specifically highlight dummy dependent variable modeling. So, it uh, in other words, this particular structure is called as a qualitative response econometric modeling. This is very interesting topic. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we have highlighted details about the uh, independent side of the pictures where some variables are quantitative in nature and some variables are qualitative in nature. And today we will specifically highlight if the dependent variables are, uh, are dummy in nature means binary or categorical in nature, then how is the structure of econometric modeling? That is how we have to discuss. Okay. So, now basically uh, uh, in the before we go to discuss the logit model and probit models, we briefly highlight what is the exact structure of uh, qualitative response econometric modeling for uh, uh, dummy dependent. Okay. So, now for dummy dependent, uh, for dummy dependent, the model basically divided into two parts. Uh, it is called as a linear model and it is called as a non-linear models. Okay. Linear model and non-linear model. Basically, uh, you know, we will use simple, uh, simple uh, models like straight line equations. Uh, you know, another way we will represent the non-linear models like you know basically we use logistic functions partic particularly probability distribution function or normal distribution function because in contem contemporary logit models there is another model called as a uh, probit model so we will discuss log uh, means we will discuss this probit model after the discussion of logit models so now in the linear linear format, uh, you know, linear format, the dummy dependent econometric modeling is called as a, a linear probability models. Okay, linear probability models or bi BCM binary choice models. That means LPM stands for linear probability models. Linear probability models. Okay, and this is BCM. So otherwise, it's called as a binary choice models binary choice models uh, you know uh, dummy dummy is a variables okay the variable basically uh, means uh, which uh, we deal in the regression analysis uh, is that uh, it may be quantitative in nature it may be qualitative in nature it may be it may be both okay but uh, here uh, here uh, we are considering both the aspects means uh, the model which involves both quantitative variables and uh, qualitative variables. Qualitative variables where data is not in a proper shape, so we will bring into proper shape. The way we will bring the proper shape, it is called as a dummy variable technique. Okay. So now uh, the linear format, uh, the uh, in the linear format of dummy dependent econometric modeling is otherwise called as a linear probability model or binary choice models. In the other case, there is a uh, there is a model called as a non-linear model that too dummy dependent non uh, dummy dependent econometric model where uh, non linear function is uh, you know uh, 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 given importance uh, so non linear model is otherwise divided into two parts one is called as a logit model and another is called as a probit models it's otherwise it's called as a normit models tobin models uh, like this so there is a lots of classification under this group so basically we will not discuss all these classification in, in detail so what we will do with uh, typically we will discuss three aspects of uh, you know dummy dependent econometric modeling that is binary choice models uh, otherwise called as a linear probability model lpm then logit model then probit model 
So, we start with first uh, binary model because it will give you uh, signal to uh, en uh, entry signal to this uh, logit model and probit models. In fact, some of the problems it is uh, nicely it can be described in the case of uh, binary probability model, but the same problems can be discussed under logit model also because log logit, logit model is a little bit advanced than the binary choice models because binary choice model has a certain limitation which can be taken care in the case of you know logit model and probit models like you know it is just uh, uh, it is one one way of movement uh, for you know uh, higher version or you can say very interesting and complex problem like you know covariance to correlation and regression similarly uh, this you know structure of domain variable modeling is that we start with the binary choice model then logit model then probit model so we are uh, just moving in the higher directions where the model accuracy will be more and more accurate okay so, uh, first of all, uh, what is this binary choice model and linear probability model? So, before I highlight this binary choice model and uh, linear probability model, so I like to highlight a, a certain uh, discussion which we have made in the last class. So, that is nothing but uh, we will put to y equal to uh, y equal to uh, what is that uh, summation uh, beta i x i uh, plus summation gamma i d i i equal to 1 to n and i equal to 1 to n here plus beta 0 plus u ok. So, this is this is quantity variables, this is qualitative variables, this is constant and this is random error terms, this is dummy de uh, sorry this is uh, simple de dependent variables and it is also quantitative in nature ok. So, in that case, uh, the in this is in the last uh, last class discussion where you know uh, variables are uh, some variables are quantitative in nature and some variables are qualitative in nature. That means, in the simple uh, regression uh, dummy modeling, so we we may use one dummy variables or we may use uh, multiple dummy variables. So, accordingly we have discussed the individual effect and we have also discussed the a interactive effect. For instance, if there is a model like this y equal to beta x plus uh, uh, you know gamma d plus u, then obviously, we will create another variable say delta into x d. Okay. So, uh, uh, then we will call it a plus u. So, this this is called as a interactive effect, which we have already discussed uh, in, in our last lectures. So, here we will not discuss all these details. So, we will directly proceed to linear probability models. Okay. So, now in contemporary to this is uh, in, uh, you know in contemporary to last class discussion. So, what we will do for linear probability models, we like to uh, write like this. So, y equal to y equal to summation beta i x i a plus beta 0 plus u. Okay. So, i equal to 1 to n. Okay. So, that means here this is dummy dependent, this is dummy dependent means first it is dependent dependent variables dependent variables and it is purely domain natures ok so this is independent variables independent variables then it is a uh, it is in, uh, in independent variable then it is uh, otherwise a uh, college uh, uh, means otherwise it is represented as a quantity uh, quantity variables ok so this is intercept and this is error terms ok so this is how the linear probability model is all about. So, I will I, I, I let it out uh, highlight in other way. So, uh, we can call it like this delta uh, instead of y i we can put it also d i d i equal to summation beta i x i a plus beta 0 plus u. Okay. So, i equal to 1 to n. So, it, it can be otherwise written as d i equal to uh, beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 plus continue plus beta k x k plus u. So, this is the generalized generalized framework of generalized framework of linear probability model. Okay. This is the generalized framework of linear probability models. Okay. So, now so we have dependent variable in the left side and all these independent variables in the right side where the dependent variable is used as a proxy variable that is dummy variables and other variables are you know as usual quantitative variables means all these variables can be measured in a 
quantitative way. So, it is not a problem. So, here problem is the dependent variable is the domain natures. That means, it is it, it can be binary, it can be a categorical, so many ways it can be response variable. So, we will we'll represent in many ways. Okay. So, now uh, here uh, where uh, you, you can say we, what will be the condition we will obtain here is that d i equal to 1 for uh, some uh, you know for some, some restriction for some restriction or you can say for yes okay, and 0 is otherwise 0 is otherwise. Okay. So, that means in this uh, this binary choice models uh, this is otherwise called as a binary choice model. So, that means once we will call it a binary choice model then there are two way representation the two way representation is that uh, uh, so it may be a value lies between uh, I mean uh, value uh, it, its value lies between 0 to 1 ok. So, this this is a binary choice model. So, its value lies between 0 to 1. So, uh, if yes then it will come to 1 and if it is no it will come to 0. So, that means that is how it is called as a binary choice model ok. So, uh, the so the wow, the basic format of you know dummy uh, dependent variable is that it is the model is called as a linear probability model. So, or otherwise called as a binary choice model where the dependent variable is categorical or binary in nature. So, it will be it will move from 0 to 1 only and in other case uh, in other case independent variables are uh, completely independent and you know uh, they are very much quantitative in nature. You remember one thing. So, after you know spe uh, proper specification the model estimation is more or less same so like which we have discussed a couple of uh, lectures back. So, like you know bivariate, trivariate or multivariate. So, usual format is as usual same, but only thing is here uh, means only uh, extra thing we are adding here is that sometimes it uh, depend the dummy variable in, uh, means some variables are qualitative in nature in the right side and some of the variables are qualitative in nature in the left side uh, left side. So, that means, till now we have not touched the structural equation modeling uh, where you know there are many independent variables and you know many independent variables, but here uh, uh, till now we are dis discussing there is one dependent variables and several independent variables. That means, one dependent variable with one depend independent variable or one dependent variable with the multiple dependent independent variables. So, now in the second case, so we are discussing uh, the dummy variable technique where uh, dependent variable is one with the several independent variables some are p is quantitative in nature some are qualitative in nature. Okay. So, that, that we have discussed in the last class, but to in our today's discussion. So, we are taking keeping uh, all variables in the right side constant and uh, multiple in nature other sides we are taking a single dependent variable which is purely qualitative in nature and its lies its value lies between uh, its value uh, value lies between 0 to uh, 0 to 1 ok 0 to 1. So, uh, if it is 1 then it is yes situation if it is 0 it is no situation ok. So, uh, means the way the, the way we will define the problem. So, accordingly we will categorize it or you can say we will call the or insert the binary code all right. So, this is how the structures you uh, you check it here. So, how I re reframe this particular uh, uh, you know binary choice model. So, this is this is how the structure is all about. So, this side I will measure x i that means uh, uh, let me highlight uh, we will put it in a simple format. This is in fact generalized formula uh, means generalized model. So, if we will put it in a simple regression model so then delta i equal to simply beta 0 beta 1 x 1 ok. Obviously, i is there because uh, uh, i represents the sample observation plus u ok. So, this is the sim simple uh, simple uh, binary choice model ok simple binary choice model. So, that means, uh, here d i uh, equal to uh, 1 for yes and 0 for otherwise ok 0 for otherwise that means, uh, so the value lies between like this way. So, this is 1 ok. So, now co corresponding the, the, this one. So, you will be draw the line here beta 0 ok. So, now uh, uh, you know uh, this uh, this is this will continue. So, obviously, some point of time the mean has to be calculated. So, this is you can say a uh, you know x uh, x 1 i. So, this should be x x 1 ok x 1 i then this side beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 i ok. So, this is the how 
this is how the structure. So, that means, we are considering this particular area. So, this maximum limit is 1. So, it will lies between 0 to 1. So, that means, whatever information we have will transfer into 0 to 1 format. So, that means, the maximum limit is 1, then minimum limit is 0. So, that means, in this particular uh, in this particular structures, there are uh, in fact, two possibilities only. So, uh, in one possibility is uh, say, uh, suppose the situation is yes no, then one possibility is yes for 1 and no for 0 or vice versa. Okay. So, that means, so there is no other way around. So, so, yeah, so you have to design the question in such a way, the response only answer yes or no or you have to develop the question accordingly in such a way. So, it will be always yes and no situation. That means, uh, either you can with some of the you know domain variable technique you have to artificially create, create the particular structure or you can say feasibility. So, accordingly you have to proceed with that structure and feasibility. So, uh, because uh, it is not a natural process. So, the, the other process may be little bit natural, but this is purely artificial and you have to design very, very, very perfectly we for you know uh, going for the estimations okay so now d0 is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 i plus u so the maximum limit will be 1 so 0 to 1 so minimum limit is 0 so now if you if you put here suppose if i will put here 1 here uh, if i will put 1 here then beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 i will be a simply equal to 1 okay so that means you see here so, I will put it in other way. So, uh, for the simplest uh, simplest models is the d i equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 i plus u. Okay. So, d d equal to d i equal to 1 for yes and 0 for otherwise. Okay. 0 for otherwise. All right. So, now, so for uh, for d equal to 1 for d equal to 1 uh, then uh, for d equal to 1 then the equation will be 1 equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 i plus u okay, for d equal to 0 for d equal to 0 then 0 equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 i plus u. Okay, so, this is the simplest formula. Okay, so, now, the, uh, if you go for estimations, so, uh, if you go for estimation then uh, the, you know here the y and x relationship are non stochastic okay so these are non stochastic in nature non stochastic in nature so that means so when we will go for estimation so when d equal to 1 then obviously we will estimate the model so obviously we will get error term y had equal to y minus y bar so y is equal to 1 here so okay so that means 1 minus beta 0 beta 0 head minus beta 1 head x ok so similarly when d equal to 0 so then uh, that implies uh, uh, u had equal to u, we had u had equal to minus beta 0 head minus beta 1 head x 1 i ok x 1 i ok so this is beta 0 uh, head beta 1 uh, x uh, this is x 1 i and this is x 1 i uh, ok this is x 1 i so now there is no such uh, for d equal to one that uh, d when there is d equal to one then that means other words d equal to one means so u head equal to one minus beta zero head minus beta one head x one i and when d equal to zero so then u head equal to minus beta zero head minus beta one head x one i okay so this is how the model can be represented but you know uh, so when we will go for uh, a generalized model, generalized model. So, for instance, if I will put here yes, d i equal to uh, d i equal to uh, um, simply um, okay, beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 i plus beta 2 x 2 i okay, plus beta k x k i. Okay. So, now uh, if I will put like this way, so d i equal to simply x beta plus u. Okay. Now, for y equal to 1, now for y equal to 1, so p r y equal to 1 for all x equal to x beta. Okay. So, now for y equal to 0, then p r upon y equal to 0 slash x is equal to 1 minus x b, because the structure is like this way, y then this probability levels. So, when y equal to 0, then probability equal to 1 minus p i. 
So, when it is 1, then it is equal to p i. So, that means, the total probability g always equal to 1. Okay. So, 1 minus p 1 minus p minus plus p i is exactly equal to 1. Okay. So, now similarly, so when y equal to 1, then you know uh, probability of uh, probability of uh, probability g total probability g equal to 1. So, 1 uh, 1 uh, equal uh, probability of y equal to 1 for x equal to simply x beta. Okay. Similarly, when y equal to 0, then probability of uh, y upon 0 uh, 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 over x will be 1 minus x beta. Okay. So, that means, uh, the structure is if y stands to 0 1, then you know uh, this residuals, this, this is this is uh, this is in fact residuals. Okay. This is in fact residuals. So, now, so the residuals we, u will stands for we will be stands for minus beta x uh, g when 0 it will be 1 minus 1 minus x beta ok 1 minus beta x then it will be uh, 1 minus beta x ok 1 minus beta x. So, this is how the structure is all about. So, now when uh, y stands for 0 1. So, u stands for minus beta x into 1 minus beta x ok. So, similarly we, we can calculate the variance of u variance of u, u upon so, uh, uh, means over x will be a probability probability of y equal to 1 over x uh, into 1 minus x beta x beta whole squares okay, uh, plus p r into y equal to 0 upon x uh, uh, into p into uh, minus x beta whole squares minus x beta whole squares. So, that means if you will if you will insert uh, if you will insert this particular structure and if you will insert this particular structure then obviously what will you, uh, what will you get uh, so uh, variance of u variance of u over x will be uh, equal to x beta x beta into 1 minus x beta whole squares uh, plus 1 minus x beta uh, 1 minus x beta into minus x beta uh, whole squares. Okay. So, that implies if x beta will uh, x beta into 1 minus uh, this is x beta only this is x beta 1 minus x beta will come on. So, then it will be uh, 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 1 1 1 minus x beta 1 minus x beta uh, plus x beta okay, plus x beta. So, that means x beta into 1 minus x beta because this and this will be cancelled. So, this is the variance of variance of u. Okay. So, now what we have uh, received in the linear probability model. So, there are two different limits. So, one limit is y equal to 1 and another limit equal to uh, uh, um, limit is y equal to 0. So, that means the uh, value uh, the variables which is qualitative in nature. So, we will transfer all these information into two, two different formats. So, so, one uh, uh, some of the items will be in the form of 1 and some of the items in the form of 0 depending upon the information availability. Okay. So, uh, for instance, you know I, I am tar targeting the issue of you know what is the uh, uh, persons having household and uh, the income. Then if you will integ integrate these two, then obviously, there uh, I will ask the respondents according to their in income levels whether the you have uh, you have a house or not. So, the obviously, they will say yes or no situation. So, that means, uh, uh, so I, I, I have to specifically I have to ask two questions. So, one is uh, do you have any house uh, means answer is yes or no. Then, uh, I like you what is the income level. So, we, we like to the corresponding income level. So, that is x component and then uh, y component is the persons having house or not. Okay. So, that means, uh, like this. Okay. Uh, let me uh, take it this with a practical examples. Okay. So, what you will do? Uh, so, instead of you know elaborating in a bigger size, so we will take a small problem, then we will highlight the exact issue of linear probability models. All right. So, what you will do? So, we will take y equal to uh, beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 i plus u i. Okay. So, this is u i. So, where O y i equal to o 1 uh, 1 and 0 ok if some yes and if it is no ok. So, let me give a example here. So, let y equal to say 
persons having having household having house okay or or you can put household having households having own house okay this is how the questionnaire you have to design okay so that means uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, here the, uh, the specific problem is that we like to know what is the impact of income on you know uh, having household uh, basically uh, when you discuss about to binary model binary choice model probit model and logit model so it will be applied on the basis of their problem setup if the problem is like this then uh, you have to apply the binary choice model but uh, the same problem can be analyzed also in the case of logit and probability probit model but it is in a different uh, uh, with a different setup okay so now uh, in the meantime uh, uh, let us assume that uh, y is a, is a variable which is, which is recognized as a person having house and or or you can say household having um, one house this is y representation similarly x representation is a, the income level of the income level income level of the households okay income level of the households okay so now you see here so the pr presentation uh, will be like this so that means so here uh, persons having house uh, or household having a uh, own house means uh, yeah, obviously the question is the yes or no situation so what we will do we will categorically divided into one if persons having persons having uh, uh, you know house person having a house either you write it here or else what you will do so questionnaire is already designed so obviously if you put y equal to 1 then it means uh, the person has a house uh, that means it is a yes situation then if person has a not a house then it will be no situation so that means so it is a zero so that means if persons does not have house or household does not have any house okay person uh, person does not have does not have any house okay have any house so this is one zero situation so how do you represent this particular structure binary choice model so now what you will do so uh, so we like to know the means the interesting interesting fact in the binary choice model is that how to bring this particular setup so that the binary choice model can be applied initially you you may not have such options the moment you will get data then obviously with the basis of data you you have to apply some you know dummy variable structures okay so the moment you will transfer the uh, available information uh, to dummy variable structure then dummy variable technique can be applied that means the binary choice model can be applied for estimating the parameters or the significance of particularly income to households okay so that means what you will do so our basic model is y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 i okay uh, here yi 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 is dummy so yi is two range 1 and 0 1 for something and 2 for something okay so that means so with this particular problem so we have taken y, uh, y and x so uh, this is say sample size i so uh, okay uh, so let's take it here so i i is the sample size so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so 10 samples i have taken so income is income is you know quantitative in nature okay household income is quantitative in nature so what will you do i will put it here 8 then 16 then 8 20 19 15 25 20 13 then 12 okay then if you if you want to increase you can also increase or if you want to decrease you can also decrease but this is a, a simple hypothetical problem where i you know income level of that particular city is like this so then uh, these are all individual units so like you know 1 2 3 4 5 okay this is uh, already written here so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so similarly for, for person 1 his income level is 8 person 2 income level is 16 person 3 income level is 8 person uh, 4 income level is this much uh, then this is first question uh, means the question where will be designed in such a way that the first question must be what is what is your income levels okay so you have to find out for the answer first 
Okay, the moment you will say the uh, my income is this much, then obviously you have to ask the second question. Do you have any house, uh, on house? So obviously there will be yes and no situation. That means in the first one when you will ask the uh, in uh, income level, then he will give you some quantity value. Means the uh, you know five thousand or twenty thousand or something something. So this is how you can say income is represented. So similar corresponding to income level, then I will ask do you have any house means. So, his answer or her answer will be simply yes or no. So, that means y is here, x is here income and y is having having house. Okay. So, if house is there then I will put yes, if not then I will put no. So, that means the having house it will turn into yes situation and no situation. Yes means it is there, no means it is not there. So, okay. so, that means persons with the person for instance take a case of uh, 8. Okay a household having income level is only 8 dollars. Eight okay. So, now with 8 dollars, so now uh, uh, whether he, uh, he has house uh, in that city or not. So, that means, if you ask do you have any house, so obviously answer is yes or no. So, if it is yes, then you put uh, yes, if it is no, then you put no. Okay. So, that means, I will I'll take it to this side. Okay. So, y is here. So, 8, 8, 8 I will take a say no. Okay. 16 yes. Then, then 8 no, then say 20 yes, then 19 yes, then 15 yes, uh, okay, 15 yes, uh, 15 yes, then, 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 uh, then 9, 20, 19 yes, then 15 yes, 25 yes, then 20 yes, 13, uh, 13, 13 no, then 12 no, okay, so this is how the structure is all about okay so now so this is in yes no situation so uh, you know the computer will not recognize this co you know letters so what you have to do you have to transfer into some binary information so that means it is only difference is y and no so that means if you put y equal to 1 then n obviously 0 because total probability equal to 1 so that means means you forget about this probability but uh, it means yes no situation means by default uh, you know there are uh, if you will go up to 1 then obviously there are two possibilities 0 and 1 if it is yes we will code 1 if it is no you will code 0 so then accordingly you transfer this particular series so n stands for 0 y stands for n 1 n stands for 0 y stands for 1 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 1 then 0 then 0. So, this is how the table is prepared. Okay. So, now once the table is prepared, so you, you will forget now y. Okay. So, y is the in the meantime there is no such uh, you know rule. So, what you have to do? So, we have to trust y uh, x into d. So, that means our standard equation is e. so d d i equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 i plus u. Okay. So, that means x and d is already there. So, now what you have to do? So, you, you have to regress like this 0 1 0 1 1 like this. Okay. So, then in the other sides, other sides is beta 0, beta 0 plus beta 1 into you can say uh, in, in, you can say 8 16 8 like, like this. Okay. So, this is how the representation is there okay, plus u. Okay. So, u 1 u 2 u 3 like this. So, u 1 u 2 up to u n. Okay. So, this is how the picture is all about alright. So, now what you have to do? <coughs> so, uh, you need to have a, uh, a, a binary choice model. So, what you have to do? So, that means, so d i equal to d i equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 i plus u. Okay. So, now as usual you have 1 is 0 1 1 0 0 0 like then x is this is y information. Uh, then x information similarly quantitative in nature so 15 20 like this way so then uh, 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 then obviously you can go for estimation so you can get the uh, d head equal to or uh, d head equal to beta 0 beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x 1 i bus that's all so this is uh, this is how the estimated regression equation for binary choice model okay binary choice model so now you have two options what is the two options? So that means e upon y uh, e e of uh, e, e for y uh, over x indicates the beta zero plus beta one. Okay. So now e upon uh, you know uh, if 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 
if y equal to beta 0, if y equal to beta 0, then you know the probability that family with 0 income, uh, that means it indicates, it indicates if y equal to beta 0, uh, then it indicates the persons, persons having a, a low in, a persons having a persons having zero income, uh, zero income, right? Person having zero income, persons having zero income have their own house. Okay. Then, if I will put like this, y equal to beta zero plus beta one, then we will write persons, persons having income having income level of beta 1 uh, having income level of beta 1 uh, have their own house ok so this is how the interpretation is all about so that means uh, binary choice model can be evaluated properly with the respect to uh, the problem setup so that means in this particular setup so y is very categorical or binary number so its value is always uh, lies between 0 to 1 so uh, once you will transfer this entire information qualitative information into a uh, yes no situation that is 0 1 for then obviously x is already quantitative so you can go ahead with regression so you will finally get the estimated model so, okay like this okay so you will get the finally estimated model so now the moment you will get this estimated model then obviously uh, you have to go for lots of uh, 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 means you have to specifically go for the validity of the model so for the validity of the model is concerned so uh, you have to go for specification test unity test and uh, overall fitness of the test then finally uh, 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 finally this uh, you know the problem of heteroscedasticity multicollinearity then autocorrelation etc etc these are uh, things has to be uh, means have to be discussed uh, again so that means uh, here the uh, thing is that once you will transfer then everything will be in a right direction or proper shape uh, you can proceed accordingly but the thing is that uh, uh, this binary choice model has a limited applications uh, the reason is that uh, there are several limitations associated with the binary choice model so first of all what are the problem associated with the binary choice models okay so then uh, uh, since there is a serious problem in binary choice model so by default you have to solve these problems in another format that is called as a logit model or you can say probit model so uh, we we first highlight the problems of binary choice model then we will move to logit models or probit models okay so what are the problems so most important problems you will face in the binary choice model is the uh, heteroscedasticity issue okay so there may be heteroscedasticity issue there is a heteroscedasticity issue okay for instance you see here uh, um, suppose uh, it depends upon you know how how is your respondent uh, uh, suppose you have uh, you have taken a uh, uh, respondents uh, 500 respondents then out of 500 respondents only one or two having higher level of income okay say let's say 10000 and other people saving say you know 5000 uh, less than 5000 okay so then obviously there is outliers problem so uh, that will lead to heteroscedasticity issue so to minimize all these things so either you will transfer uh, uh, apply the transformation rule then you simplify or else uh, or else what you have to do you have to change the sample structure so that means you have to choose the respondent in such a way so that their income level will be very uh, more or less homogeneous not perfectly homogeneous that means if you say uh, 10 10 10 10 then that is one type of homogeneous or if you put 10 9 uh, 8 uh, uh, like this so there is a variation so if 10 is average then 2 3 points below and 2 3 points above so that is that in that structures it is not a problem but if there is huge difference then obviously there is a serious uh, serious issue of heteroscedasticity so that means one of the most important problem we will face in the case of binary choice model is the heteroscedasticity issue. In fact, heteroscedasticity can also be uh, visible in the case of uh, uh, as usual uh, simple model or you can say like you know uh, bivariate model, trivariate model and multivariate model. But in this particular context, uh, 
uh, even if you have uh, one variable is dummy whether it is a dependent site or independent site, but in this particular case like binary choice model. So, we will assume that the, uh, this particular case is a totally binary in nature and the data variation is there. So, as a result, so there is a heteroscedacity problem. So, that means one of the most important limitation you will observe in the binary choice model is that the existence of heteroscedacity, uh, heteroscedacity problem. So, uh, since it is a you first check it then accordingly you have to go for proper transformation or proper structure to solve this heteroscedacity issue. In fact, this particular problem can be solved uh, through logit and you can say probit model. Second, so there is a difference of you know uh, uh, difference for of interpreting p okay so uh, we we uh, you know uh, p is always probability is always lies between 0 to 1 okay 0 is one extreme and one is another extreme okay another extreme so that means we are taking two extremes okay in between in between there is a, uh, say several points okay 0 1 so, it is 1.1, uh, uh, you know, point 0 0.1, 0 0.2, like this way, it will continue 0 0.9. So, so many points are there. So, but uh, you know, we are not touching any other point. So, we are just, uh, we are just uh, uh, preparing this set of, you can say, uh, 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 0, 1 in interval. So, that means one extreme this side and one extreme other side. So, that is why uh, binary choice models uh, has a limitation when the a picture will be in between 0 to 1. So, but here we are creating artificial uh, scenario, but some of the cases artificial scenario may not be possible. In that context, binary choice model has a uh, you know uh, uh, limiting use or limiting ap applications. So, this is second uh, second problem associated with the interpretation probability having you know uh, uh, you know less than 1 uh, or you can say greater than to 0. So, if it is greater than 0, and less than to 1. So, in between then it, it has a serious uh, problem with respect to interpret, uh, interpretations. Then third problem is uh, the uh, marginal effect. Okay. So, the marginal effect, marginal effect can be also studied here. Uh, marginal effect can be studied. So, the marginal effect can be observed. So, that means, uh, once you have uh, d, d i equal to alpha plus uh, means beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 up to beta k x k plus u. So, then obviously, you will get the estimated model, then with respect to estima estimated model, you can differentiate with respect to particular parameter. So, uh, you know with respect to particular variable say uh, x 1 uh, uh, i x 2 i like this way. So, that particular effect will uh, give you the marginal effect. Sometimes, you know uh, since uh, there is only limit two limiting factors, then the marginal effect will be more or less you know uh, very limiting use. So, as a result it is a, a, it is a serious problem in binary choice models. Okay. So, with this uh, we will we'll, uh, we'll uh, finish this particular binary choice model, because all these limitation will briefly highlight uh, in the case of also in the uh, in the case of logit models. Okay. So, then next item we like to discuss is called as a logit models. Okay. So, what is this uh, concept of logit model? So, logit model is the nonlinear format, uh, nonlinear formatting uh, uh, means nonlinear form of the dummy variable modeling. So, particularly in the case of dummy dependent. So, it is derived, the root is derived from the logistic functions. Okay. So, the root is derived from logistic function. Okay. So, the root is derived from logistic functions. So, what is logistic function? So, that means, so here we will consider p i equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus z. So, p i stands for probability and you know uh, e stands uh, this particular uh, this particular uh, equation in the exponential for, for format and particularly the whole pro whole function will be related to logistic in nature. Logistic in nature. Okay. So, that means, uh, lo logit, for logit modeling is a special type of modeling, uh, means it is uh, advanced, uh, advanced to linear probability models, where, uh, where uh, you know the uh, dependent variable is a proxy in nature. So, uh, uh, when dependent variable is a proxy in nature, then we will use linear probability models. 
but certain cases uh, this you know linear probability model has a limitation so the way we have already discussed so as a result we will prepare another type of uh, beautiful structures through which we can observe this you know uh, uh, problems so that means uh, uh, the problem is where the dependent variable is a proxy and independent variable is a quantitative in nature so now we start in this logistic format we start with a particular function say pi so which is equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus z so what i will do so you know probability value uh, probability value has a two limits so 1 minus p this is probability of success and this is probability of failures okay this is success side and this is failure side so all right so now uh, uh, we like to find out the ratio so the ratio will give you the signal or indication of the logistic uh, you know logistic model so uh, pi is a logistic function which is equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power mi minus z so corresponding to pro you know logistic function so we will find out 1 minus uh, pi okay so which uh, which will observe uh, uh, just uh, right now uh, 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 before you are uh, explaining 1 minus pi let's uh, let's we will first uh, highlight the particular structure pi so pi is here 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus z so if i will simplify this particular one then pi equal to e to the power z by 1 plus e to the power z am i right so this is this is how the pi structure can be developed so now uh, this is 1 minus uh, 1 minus pi uh, uh, then once you have a pi then you can find out the 1 minus pi so that means 1 minus e to the power z by 1 plus e to the power z okay so this is this is how 1 minus pi is all about okay so now if you simplify then it is nothing but 1 plus e to the power z minus e to the power z divided by uh, divided by 1 plus e to the power z okay so now this is this is cancelled so it is simply equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power uh, e to the power z okay 1 by uh, uh, 1 minus p uh, 1 minus pi equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power z okay so uh, what uh, what you will do if we simplify so that means we start with the pi so pi equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus z uh, which is nothing but e to the power z by 1 plus e to the power z then 1 minus p i is equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power 1 by 1 plus e to the power z so uh, we use p and 1 1 minus p i uh, p i and 1 minus p i then you find uh, you will develop a, a ratio okay that is called as a odd ratio which is a different uh, which is the division between probability of success and probability of failures right so that means we will define a functions called as a p i by 1 minus p i okay 1 minus p i which is nothing but 1 by 1 plus e to the power 1 by 1 uh, means e to the power z is e to the power z by 1 uh, 1 plus e to the power z divided by 1 by 1 plus e to the power z okay so this is just i have put the value here so this is p i value so i am putting p i value here and i am putting here uh, 1 minus pi value okay so now if we simplify then this and this cancel so that means which is, is, is simply equal to e to the power z so that means pi by 1 minus pi pi by 1 minus pi is equal to simply e to the power z okay so now uh, this is still it's a nonlinear format still nonlinear format so what we will do we will transfer this into linear format because the basic a uh, uh, basic point of starting uh, means basic uh, format of this econometry modeling we start with the OLS techniques okay so the OLS technique one of the restriction is that the functional form must be linear in nature so means the parameter which you are going to estimate uh, must be linear in nature so accordingly you have to transfer this function into linear format so what you have to do so you apply log in both the sides okay so the moment you will put log in both the sides so the format will be like this so beta uh, log for p i minus 1 minus p i okay so this will be come to uh, e to the power z okay so if you apply log this side then this should be log uh, 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 other side also uh, so then uh, you log p i by 1 minus p i equal to log 1 uh, log e to the power z so if you will simplify further then it will be z log e okay z log e but log e always equal to 1 okay log e is co always equal to 1 so obviously the transformation will be log p by 1 minus p i 
log 1 minus pi is simply equal to z only. Okay. So, z equal to. So, z is a, z is a function actually. So, z is a function uh, uh, actually. So, what you will do? So, you see uh, the, uh, the basic logistic format is like this. So, uh, we will find out p i, p i equal to e to the power z by 1 plus e to the power z, 1 minus p i equal to uh, 1 by e to the power z. So, as a result p by 1 minus p is equal to uh, e to the power z, then log of p by 1 minus p i, uh, p i is equal to log of e to the power z, then obviously z, uh, z uh, means log of uh, p by 1 minus p i, 1 minus p i is equal to simply z, okay. but let z equal to alpha plus beta x. Okay. So, that means, we have to find out log p by 1 minus p i is equal to is equal to alpha plus beta x, then by default we will put error term. So, this is the general format, format of logit models this is the general format of logit models. Okay. So, now uh, 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 what we have discussed uh, in this particular class is that, so we are very much uh, uh, you know uh, highlight highlighted the entire structure of uh, binary choice models, then uh, the introduction of logit models. So, that means typically uh, we have discussed uh, the situation where the dependent variable is dummy in nature or categorical in nature. Then, when the situation is uh, uh, dummy dependent, then there are three different ways we can discuss uh, or you can analyze. One is a binary choice model, another is a logit model, another is a probit model. So, binary choice models, uh, the uh, you know the advantage is that it has a zero one limit only. So, it is very simple and very easy to understand and easy to estimate, but in other case uh, logit model and probit model it is a somewhat little bit complex, because one case we will use probability distribution and another case it is a, norm, a normal distribution. The way we have discussed it is purely probability functions that is you know that is how we use probability here and that to logistic functions. So, now with the help of logistic function we develop that particular model, so that this model is called as a logistic model. So, logistic model is that log p by 1 minus p i equal to alpha plus beta x plus u, this p by 1 minus p i is the odd ratio. Okay. So, now uh, uh, with respect to the same problem which we have highlighted just now in the case of binary choice model. So, uh, where uh, you know family uh, family income is integrated with the uh, family uh, ha ha having house or uh, uh, not having house. So, in that problem, so we can also cite it here, but there is this uh, interesting uh, problem here, because uh, in that uh, binary choice model, we are limiting the size 0 to 1. So, if we are limiting the size 0 to 1 here, then obviously, the problem will be insignificant, means the model itself will be inconsistent. So, we will highlight the what is the uh, actual inconsistent here. So, that next class we will discuss in details about that inconsistency part of logistic model. So, to make the system uh, consistent, then what sort of things requ uh, required, so we will highlight in detail in the next class. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.